As Tom said, I'm Pat Carrick. I'm the Director of Physics and Electronics. And uh, I'm going to give you just a very brief overview of, um, of what we do in, in my directorate. It, you'll notice there are a lot of similarities to what, what Hugh said uh, this morning. Um, and to set the stage, I want to remind you that in physics and electronics, we do kind of a combination of two things. Um, we're looking at both the ver very fundamental science, which takes ideas and opportunities in science and drives them forward, and also basic engineering in terms of looking at new architectures for devices. Um, since uh, physics and electronics is very physically oriented, uh, we have a part in this. So um, <coughs> we're looking at ways to arrange matter in new ways to give us uh, uh, better capabilities in things like sensors or computational devices. So we're looking at new electronics or photonics and new structural designs for electronics, um, and also unusual states of matter and energy, uh, and how we can use those uh, in a certain way to exploit that for um, physics. Um, <coughs> I don't know what that was, but <laughs> it was yes. Yeah, so I hope hopefully it wasn't an alarm. Um, we're also looking at new ways to acquire information and use that information to most benefit uh, capabilities for the Air Force. So um, we're looking at ways not only to develop sensors, but also to integrate those sensors to drive uh, information and optimize how we collect this, um, this, this flood of information that we get for Air Force systems to be able to use it in a, in a useful way. And also we're looking at the fundamental theory and uh, mathematics uh, primarily driven by electromagnetics and ele electromagnetic sources. So um, Hugh gave you a very nice uh, overview of technology horizons. It's one of the things that drives us as well. Um, and and uh, he actually mentioned that there are some things in tech horizons that RSL doesn't do and that physics does and, and also that uh, chemistry materials uh, and aerospace does as well. So these are some of the things that I pulled out of Technology Horizons that are of interest to physics and electronics. In particular, looking at developing ways of navigating in areas where GPS just doesn't work or is somehow blocked by, a, by an adversary or blocked by buildings, um, which, which really involves a, a, a variety of different techniques, but mostly looking at uh, developing very, very fine inertial guidance um, on small electronic systems. Uh, we're also looking at um, uh, waveforms of electromagnetic systems in terms of being able to um, uh, optimize the spectrum that we have, the very limited spectrum, and using a waveform diversity to be able to uh, achieve that. Um, we're also looking at developing things like intelligent sensors so that the information flood that you get from sensor systems can be optimized um, uh, so that, so that uh, we're not overwhelmed by um, the data that we get from those systems. Uh, we're also looking at various ways of improving directed energy, either microwave-based systems or laser-based systems, primarily for tactical um, uh, systems. Um, there's also a big emphasis in space situational awareness and being able to see and understand what's in orbit. And we need to be able to do that on a very uh, near real-time basis and uh, persistently so that we know everything that's there as much as we can all the time. And we're also looking at nanotechnology for a variety of reasons, uh, driving electronics, but also looking at uh, even systems that drive things like uh, human-machine interfaces. So I picked out some, what I think are grand challenges. There are grand challenges that are embedded in technology horizons, but I have another set of grand challenges as well. Uh, things like looking for high temperature, if not room temperature, uh, superconducting materials. Dr. Russell mentioned that this morning. Uh, this is a difficult thing and you may never get there, but we're trying to set challenges that push us forward so that um, uh, we're, we're trying to push the boundaries, and even if we don't get there, if we can find something that works much better than the superconductors, the high temperature superconductors that we know of now, then we've gone a long way towards um, increasing our capabilities. 
We're also looking at things such as the potential for all optical computing that drives us beyond Moore's Law and the limitations in CMOS-based electronics. Um, we're looking at ways of developing uh, systems that could give us um, a fully enabled quantum computation. And you'll see a little bit of that when we get into the um, cold atom work and the um, other types of quantum information science that we do. Um, this is another real challenge in, in being able to develop very compact, high power energy systems that could fit on a variety of different small platforms, um, primarily driven by solid state lasers. We're also looking at um, trying to develop systems that can actually identify to a very fine scale objects that are in geo. Geo is very far away um, and uh, it's, it's important to be able to know what your satellite is doing or if there's another object that could be uh, approaching your satellite for collision purposes. So we're really trying to um, improve various types of imaging to be able to ob uh, image those objects in, in uh, geosynchronous orbit. And we're also looking at <coughs> the science behind trying to predict space weather out to 72 hours, uh, which gives us enough time to be able to take pr protective measures if we need to on our very important satellite systems that are in orbit. So here's who we are in terms of our, the directorate. And once again, we're kind of split up into big chunks, as, as any of the directorates are, physics or physical mathematics and electronics. And then there are other, uh, other uh, support avenues. You won't hear from these today, uh, but these people are important as well because they keep our directorate running. So in physics, um, uh, you'll hear from uh, so several of these people in the first part of this in terms of our science advisory board part, uh, Dr. Lugensland in electroenergetic physics, plasma physics in particular. Um, uh, you'll hear Dr. Um, Fiesen, who's in space science, and Dr. Kent Miller, who does imaging and rem remote sensing primarily for space situational awareness. Um, and then after that, you'll hear from Dr. Kerchik on atomic molecular and optical physics, and Dr. Para, uh, who's a relatively new program manager within the last year, uh, who's um, focusing on ultra short pulsed, ultra high peak power laser interaction um, with matter primarily. Um, and, and Dr. Schlossberg, who runs our uh, optics and laser program, is actually not able to be here, and his talk will be given by Dr. Para, who uh, also does laser work. Um, in electromagnetics um, and uh, sensing surveillance and navigation is, a, is really part of uh, the, what we call physical mathematics. So this is, these are both programs, and Dr. Nachman and Dr. Shogren, where mathematics and theory drives our advances in uh, sensing and navigation and surveillance or um, in fundamental electromagnetics. And then in electronics, um, there's a variety of things. Dr. Pomeranke primarily focuses on uh, photonics and uh, uh, nanoelectronics and terahertz light sources. Uh, Dr. Reinhardt, who looks at sensing and sensing modalities and how to drive uh, information that's, that's uh, developed by sensors is flooded da data that we get into um, more compact um, sources of information that can be used and exploited. Um, Dr. Huang, who works in uh, high speed electronics to drive that uh, foundation into, um, uh, into very, very fast, very uh, highly capable electronic systems. And then quantum electronic solids, Dr. Weinstock is really um, it has a variety of things, including the high temperature superconductors and metamaterials and some uh, nano electronics programs. So once again, we're organized in terms of these uh, focus areas. Uh, Hugh described four of them. Uh, the other, we have three of the 10 in AFOSR, uh, plasma physics, high, temp uh, high energy density equilibrium processes is one. Um, uh, the optics, electromagnetics, and uh, signal processing is another in complex electronics. So we do things in, in, in this one in terms of space weather, ultra-short lasers, pulse power, um, and things like nonlinear optics. In uh, electromagnetics and optics, we uh, are looking at complex electromagnetic signal propagation, 
uh, optical imaging and adaptive optics primarily for uh, observing things in space, uh, and new mathematics that's applied to these uh, complex um, physical problems. Um, in our electronics and fundamental quantum process processes, this is where we're looking for our new high temperature superconductors, uh, nonlinear optical materials, our photonics and uh, spintronics uh, focus is, is in this focus area. All of our sensing and metamaterials work is in there as well, as well as our quantum information science, which is driven a lot by ultra-cold atoms and molecule work. So, uh, finally, I wanted to leave you with a sense of some of the, um, what we think are important achievements that came out of our program in this last year. And well, this is just a smattering. This is not a complete collection of them. This is just a, a little bit of an example. Um, things like uh, fellows, and, and these are our PIs. These are not internal to our RSE program managers. These are, these are what we're doing for our, our, our principal investigators at universities and Air Force Research Laboratory. Um, various things like um, uh, graduate student awards, uh, young investigators and PKs, um, uh, nominees and, and recipients, um, various chairs that are involved in basic uh, uh, research societies and things that are driven even by um, levels of uh, the national academies and the, and the president. So with that, I'm going to leave a few minutes for questions, if anybody has questions, um, and uh, thanks for your attention. Are there any questions? Dr. Riker. Um, so you had six grand challenges that I thought were uh, excellent, and I'm just wondering about the relationship of those grand challenges to uh, the ones in Tech Horizon, and in particular, how you implement those grand challenges in your portfolio. Well, you'll notice the grand challenges are, are pretty broad and pretty forward-looking. So the, the thing with Tech Horizons is that it has a, a 10 to 20 year time scale. Some of the grand challenges that I named are actually beyond the 20 year time scale. Um, a lot of the grand challenges in Tech Horizons that, that we look at are driven by information and information systems and also um, electronic systems essentially that can turn over on a much faster time frame. Uh, you know, on a time scale of two to three years. So the rest of the grand challenges that I have are trying to look beyond that. So they're very big, and, um, and some of them may not ever be achieved. But that's okay, because that really pushes us to look into new science in a variety of areas. But, but how do you implement them in your, in your portfolio? Do you have a, a mechanism by which you favor those to accomplish, or I'm not sure how that works? Well, it, it's, it's, it's hard to describe in terms of how you look at those things because there are a variety of, of um, activities between program managers. So we, we use these grand challenges to guide us in terms of looking to see where the program managers are going. So, and, you know, and we're trying to encourage those particular areas. And they're, they're not necessarily all inclusive of, of the grand challenges that we have, but, um, but we certainly drive portfolios in that direction. Yes? Yes. So, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so the the question was really, do we use anything like X prizes or or outside challenges to drive solutions of that? We haven't yet, to a great extent. Although there's an Air Force Research Laboratory program that does look at um, using um, uh, design classes to be able to drive problems that AFRL sets. So that's kind of a model that, that can be used to, to drive problems and, and, and solutions um, that are outside of the normal uh, uh, process that we use for um, developing things out of the university systems by a broad agency announcement. But there are, there are now a, a series of th these things that seem to be coming along within the government that we may be able to use in the future to uh, drive uh, the general public to solve particular problems. Uh, 
Yeah, I, th I think I think my time is up, so I think we're gonna we're gonna have to move on.